Good morning guys, what is happening? It's a beautiful day here in New York City. So we're out at Washington Square Park. I got my good friend Drew with me and we're gonna What's be- time. <laughs> <laughs> so today we've got a couple different film cameras that we're gonna be walking you guys through. Right now I've got the Contax G1. This is a point and shoot 35 millimeter camera. It does have autofocus, so I'm super excited to bring this baby out. Drew, what you got going on? I got the Mamiya RB67 uh, 120 medium format. So this uh, is definitely a much beefier camera, but you get some pretty high quality yeah. images from both of them. And as far as the film stock right now, I'm shooting on Fuji 400 and what do you got in? You got Portrait 800 in. Okay, so we have a couple different film stocks that we can test out and let's get shooting. All right, so when it comes to taking a great film photograph, one of the most important things is going to be your composition. Now, whether you're a beginner or pro level photographer, composition is basically how your image is divided to give you the most appealing subject. Yeah, yeah. right now um, we pulled up on a street and we got uh, the Freedom Tower kind of dividing, going up the middle of the frame, some leading lines going in towards the tower. So as far as the composition, we definitely want to have this center focus. So like you said, the roads and the trees will give it this leading line effect. The viewer's eye will just kind of be directed towards where you're trying to look. Exactly. Oh, damn, we now got that truck in the way. What's up, let me wait. Now, to be honest, when it comes to film, every single shot that you're taking is essentially costing money, not only to develop, but also to get it scanned. So you have to be very resourceful and thoughtful about when you're deciding to actually take the picture. It's not like a digital camera where you can snap dozens of pictures and just choose the best one. So you definitely have to think more about every single picture that you're taking. Lights going away. I'll see people walking. Fuck it. Ooh, I'm out. Good leading lines right here. You got some nice shadows coming through. You got kind of, kind of the lines coming from the bottom left corner, kind of just going towards the right, just kind of leading the viewer's eyes throughout the photo. All right, now another thing you need to consider when you're taking your film photographs is the film stock you're using. A lot of films have a number after the name. So for example, there's Portrait 160, Portrait 400, and Portrait 800. And that number basically correlates with the ISO that it's shooting at, meaning that you can't change it natively within your camera and you're really only stuck with the capabilities of what that film has to offer. So it does make it a little bit difficult if you're trying to shoot one roll throughout the entire day. So Drew, what are your recommendations? Yeah, usually in daytime, it's good to start out with the film. I mean, if it's really bright, you can go down to 160, but 400 is usually what I stick with but around the evening time when the sun starts to set or in some shadows you want to like maybe bump it up to 800 so yeah that's what we're doing right now we got 400 in and then a little later we'll probably shoot some 800. We're just getting a lot of layers and textures in here you got a nice reflection going and then some nice green and pink right there with those flowers but yeah just I just look for in New York City just a lot of just texture. All right, right now we've got the World Trade Center right behind me. So Drew's gonna try and get a quick portrait on medium format. It should look super crisp and a lot of detail. So let's get this. Yeah, you're gonna get a lot, a lot of separation, a lot of good bokeh right behind him. All right, one, two, three. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Medium format portraits just give you a lot of like separation between the foreground of a subject and the background. So that's why a lot of people, a lot of like fashion photographers, still use medium format today. All right, right now I'm gonna try and shoot this range. Let's see if I can get this shot. All right, now when it comes to film photographs, lighting is absolutely crucial because a lot of times whatever you take in the camera is pretty much what you're gonna end up with in the post. There's no raw capabilities where you can basically save an image if you completely mess it up. So yeah, there is flexibility in film. It has a like, good dynamic range, so you can like overexpose by a couple stops and usually get away with it. So the best rule of thumb is to try and get it as close as you can in camera using your camera's light meters or a light meter app. So Drew's gonna demonstrate how he uses it right here. Yeah. So of course, it's better to buy a light meter. They're just a little more accurate, but I just have an app on my phone that's been working for me for the past couple years, that's all I've been using. So I'm just gonna take a meter reading of a street right here. My light meter is telling me to shoot at 1 60th of a second at f5.6. I'm actually gonna shoot it at 1 25th of a second just so I can get a crisper image and no camera shake. I 
now when it comes to shooting film, one of the most important things is that you definitely want to capture the moment. And what we mean by that is that there's so many great things happening in New York City that you really just want to get out there and capture the moment, especially on film. There's a certain feel that you get through film that I don't feel like is captured as well in digital. So it's nice because it almost feels just more nostalgic and just kind of more rooted in emotion when you're shooting this type of stuff, especially because you can't see the image as soon as you're done. And the lighting is looking absolutely great right now, so let's get some pics going. All right, so we just got our film back from the lab. Drew actually went to his house and he has a scanner, so he was able to scan all the rolls, which is a little bit cheaper than having the store do it for you. But real quick, I definitely wanted to go through a couple of the shots that we took and give you guys my thoughts now that we're actually able to see the final images. I think Drew's roll definitely had some better pictures, so we're just gonna run through those. All right, now, as you guys saw from the video, when we were talking about that composition, I really enjoy this picture because as you guys can see, the World Trade Center directly in the center of the frame. And as we were saying, those leading lines of the trees and the streets just really brings your eye to the World Trade Center. The sun is just barely peeking through the trees on the right side and even the people crossing the street just gives it a lot more life so overall I'm a big fan of this shot. This next shot even though there's not too much going on I think the natural lighting in it really caught how that sun was bouncing off the brick wall. Now this one in particular is actually a really nice shot. Drew was talking a little bit about how the leading lines from the shadow just naturally draws your eyes and I definitely think there's a lot going on in this photo. Now as great as it is to have a wide collection of photographs there's really nothing better than being able to put it on a website and build your own portfolio especially now in 2022 if this is the year where you really want your photography your business to pop off then having a website is absolutely crucial now trust me guys i've used a couple of different website builders in the past but recently i've been trying out the sponsor of today's video zyro and it's honestly made the process so seamless now the really great thing about zyro is that there's no coding experience necessary it's very easy to use that you can easily pick up because all you got to do is just drag and drop a bunch of different blocks and you can rearrange and organize it exactly how you like you don't have to fidget around with any lines of code and to be honest it literally took me about an hour to get my basic site up and running they also have a bunch of pre-made templates which is what i've been using to start up my own portfolio website and the reason I'm recommending Zyro to you guys is that it's actually the most affordable option on the market right now especially for something like a website where you're gonna have to renew it every single month you don't want to be spending unnecessary amounts of money and their pricing starts at around three dollars which is less than your average cup of coffee and the great thing about Zyro is that you can even update your plan so you can host an e-commerce store which is super essential if you guys eventually want to be selling things like your prints your own Lightroom presets or any sort of merch or apparel that you want to be selling Zyro makes it all possible now if you guys head to the link in my description they're actually running a really great sale for this new year where you not only get a custom domain but you get an exclusive discount and four months free if you purchase a yearly plan like i said guys getting your portfolio on a website is one of the best ways to start making new clients and zyro has made it super easy so make sure to head to the link in my description down below this portrait that we took right in front of the world trade center also looks super fire there's a lot of detail to be honest on this shot i don't think we nailed the focus completely right however it's still a really nice image however this next shot turned out really incredible as you guys can see on the world trade center there's this really nice ray of sunlight hitting the side i think the empty street just adds a lot of character to the image similarly in this next shot closer to the pier you still get that ray of sunlight coming off the building and to be honest the only thing i might do with this image is maybe crop it a little bit so that we can place the world trade center on the left third of the frame and that just helps a little bit more with your composition as well all right now we'll just go through a couple more photos but to be honest probably my favorite one out of the entire shoot was definitely this portrait of myself the clarity is just so sharp there's so much detail in this image even if you zoom it in and the way that the sun was setting in the background just Chef's kiss on that one. Now this shot right here, even though there's not a ton going on, I just really like the colors of this image and it really brings out that fall ambiance. And finally is this image of all these plastic cans. And to be honest, when Drew said he was taking a picture of it, I was like, bro, what are you talking about? There's literally nothing going on. But now that I see the process film, it's actually a super dope photo. And every time I go out and shoot with Drew, he's always got a unique eye and perspective. So I'm always learning something new whenever I'm shooting with him. But guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how we shoot film in New York City. And for anyone out there who's trying to get into film photography, hopefully these tips were helpful if you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like down below drew's instagram will be linked in the description and let me know what other types of videos you guys want to see as always folks don't stress finesse peace y'all